One of the best tools that you can use for training, and all you need is a Sharpie and some cardboard. Let's start. Club ordinance for ammo, down below. A huge question that gets asked all the time is what can I do to train to get better and everything. And well, the standard answer is dry fire at home because it's absolutely true. It's just time, it doesn't take any money, anything like that. When you get out to the range, whether you have an open wooded forest or out in the desert or some NRA range where they make you do everything really stupid and retarded. If you have a piece of cardboard and a Sharpie, you can do something that can help you out tremendously, okay? But it comes down to you being strict on yourself. And that's drawing an acceptable sight picture. So in the fundamentals during sight picture, there is a thing called acceptable sight picture. And quite frankly, I learned this from long gun shooting from Kalen Wojcik, a modern day sniper. And I just started applying it to other things and uh, it helps out a lot. Obviously not today in the snow though. So when you're moving in the snow, shit's gonna get a little different. And for those of you who don't like swearing, suck it up. So acceptable sight picture. What is it? It is your acceptable size that you can hit. So you can apply this to many different things. For right now, I'm moving around in the snow. I drew a box that's a little bigger than what I normally shoot at. Uh, so I can do a little further stuff and train that up. And then moving back and forth, especially when there's a little hill right where I am, I'm sliding around and my shots are going like this. And it's pretty consistent on all of them. But I use that because that's what I'm going for. Now, I can go from a big one moving around to shooting for the back to a lot smaller to still moving around or standing. The key with this is use it in context of what you're doing and what your skill level is. For example, if you come over here, I was just standing and shooting at the head and if I want to, so standing and shooting in the head, I didn't move left or right or up and down. I would just make my acceptable sight picture smaller for that so I can get better at that. But when I move around, it's obviously gonna be harder. So I can kind of gauge what I'm gonna do. All I need is a Sharpie. I just have to be strict with myself in that if I have a round that's outside, like all these failures, um, I need to figure out what happened there. And I can tell you a lot of these is slipping and I didn't gain my sights to get them right here. I pressed when I knew I was gonna be inside this whole thing. So I need to be more strict with myself, okay? <clears throat> now, how can you apply this to different things other than just training? Well, part of the weapon safety rules is know your target, what lies beyond, in between, and to the flanks. Uh, part of knowing your target is where you need to place a round on that target, whether it be your acceptable side picture with a Sharpie or a two-legged critter or four, okay? Uh, people are a lot more moral when it comes to shooting animals than they are, you know, the two-legged type. Now. If someone is wearing body armor, you obviously want to shoot outside that body armor. So you need to know your target and that acceptable sight picture shifts from center mass to something else, okay? Um, or if it's an animal, you're looking for the vital zones, you're looking for how big those vital zones are and your capability as a shooter, because that's your responsibility, and then uh, what rounds you're using and at what distance you can engage and that gets into external ballistics and stuff like that. But either way, you can train all of that simply by using an acceptable sight picture and drawing it out. So uh, we got like one round up here in the corner. Now, if I wanna move and shoot at the head, which is gonna be difficult, I don't wanna drop anything out of here. So I know that I have to be really strict and I have a bad habit of pressing my trigger down and left, drops my shots left. So if we go back here a little ways, I can stand static and I can shoot that all day, but then I'm not challenging myself. So just go here, get my sights up. All right, go back. I know we got a little hill. All right. I can do that pretty much all day standing, but how does that help me if I want to get better? I can throw some movement in there. So if I'll simply go, I don't know, I'll go left to right and I'll shoot into the head and yeah, I'm closer, but I also have a horizontal box, so hopefully that'll help me out. 
give me a little handicap, all right? So, uh, I'll go with some compressor ready. So, moving. All right, up close, that's pretty easy. I got, this is my first one, this is my second one, this is my third one, all right? But the further back I go, those errors left and right and high are gonna just get bigger. <clears throat> So I might want to change my acceptable side picture to here if I'm starting to throw shots out. And it's not bad to do these, to miss. It's, it's gonna happen. If you take all these really personally, that shot's already out, fuck it, learn from it, move on, okay? All you have to do is, why did I do that? And fix it immediately. Or else you're gonna be wasting rounds and pissing into the wind, okay? Now, so as for standing static, or moving left or right, or even forward and back, you have different things that you're training, from gaining your side alignment, side picture, uh, trigger control, to now you're gaining movement in whatever environment you're in. We don't exactly have a flat range that's really easy with gravel right now, because everything's covered in snow, so there's a lot of slipping going on. Adjust your acceptable side picture to what you're doing and how proficient you are but make it tight, make it a little smaller, challenge yourself. And when you start uh, shooting rounds outside your box, less and less and less, tighten it up and move on. All right, so acceptable side picture. Again, if you have any kind of pistol qualifications, regardless of if it's at a department, military, um, private security, or executive protection, whatever like that, what you can do with acceptable side picture is a really simple and really great thing. Take whatever target size you have, whatever is acceptable for that qual, at whatever distance, cut that bitch in half, okay? You cut that in half and you just made your acceptable um, hits a lot tighter so that way you're a lot better. So that when you go to do that qual, now it's a lot easier, all right? You don't have to stress as much. And honestly, you can probably fib it if you have to because now you have a bigger, bigger acceptable side picture to hit. <clears throat> um, and it's simple, it's a simple training trick in the mind. So like, I just drew from here. I didn't hit them in the, I don't know if I hit them in the box in there, but there's there, there, and then one right there. And I think the rest was in there. Um, yeah, it was that guy, I think. I'm not sure. Either way, um, but you can do whatever, qualification you're doing even if you don't have the right target target like an izzy target or a department of homeland security they have some really weird huge humans human sized targets that are super easy and if you think you're good because you get 100 percent on those keep trying uh, simply take that sharpie it's one of the biggest tools that you can use all right i have an entire bag full of them for all my shooters when i bring them out to train so that they can get used to doing it on themselves. Um, again, with acceptable side picture, it's it's something that you need to adjust for yourself. But also, think about it in the context that a lot of people don't have the tools to, or are printers, or they don't have the access to go out and buy a lot of targets or something. Honestly, you can do this on the back of a pizza box with a air pistol or a BB gun or whatever you have in your backyard and you can get better. Yes, you can work all your mechanics and everything like that. Um, and you may not get the recoil control and everything which you'll have to work on with live fire or like uh, some simulation system that they have like the cool fire. Um, put a card up there for the video. Um, so that when you get out, you're even better. Remember, all those reps you do dry fire, they come out. So the first thing I did before I started shooting today is <laughs> I used a little BB gun to, or a CO2 pistol to uh, warm up a little bit so I can spare some rounds. That way I can take my training a little further. Another easy use for it, draw a small box and you can figure out how precise you can be with your, with your pistol, rifle, whatever. Um, in my opinion, a precision shooter is not someone who shoots long range or anything like that, which, yeah, they are. Um, but it's someone who can place their rounds on any system exactly where they want, and that's always difficult. But you can also use it to test how accurate, not just shooting is, but your, your gun. So you can draw a small square on target, and you come up and see how it is. So, for example, all of that was all right here. So. Sights are there. Now that's my holdover for a CO2 pistol. 
and I can simply adjust from there. And at three yards, I can get an idea. So now my shots. Okay, that's where it is. Bring it up. Oh, out. Locked back and everything. And if you don't suck, you can bring them up, but I suck. All right. CO2 pistols can only do so much, but they can do a lot. There's a few things on acceptable sight picture to go over. Uh, and again, with a Sharpie, cardboard, paper, color pencil, color pencil, color pencil, gel pen, whatever you have to go ahead and set it out, find your context, figure it out, depend on what you're doing and uh, move around, static, whatever. Um, just make sure you're shifting it and tightening it up and being strict with yourself and measuring yourself against those fundamentals and analytically thinking. Um, it also tests out your gear. So this is a little light switch adapter to my little leg strap here from emissary development I bought and I just snapped it off during my draw. It's actually a cool idea that goes right there and then push, right? But caught up on the holster and boom, snapped right off. So. I bought one more, so we'll see if that one does the same thing. Anyway, so make sure you go down below, check out the description, and appreciate the sponsor of this video, Airgun Depot, for the little CO2 pistol. It's actually heavier than my Glock 45 with all the stuff on it, but it's like a gen ancient, I don't remember. Um, but the weight of the CO2 in the mag and everything, locking back is excellent. So. Appreciate them for being a sponsor, it's good for training. And uh, as well as my own company, discount code below for anything on the site that you want, just use YouTube and check out the training in the uh, on the website, weaponsnatcher.com. From rifle analytics, pistol analytics, scope rifle, and I'm doing one LPVO employment course in the middle of August um, for I think a total of eight shooters as a three-day course, okay? And that discount code applies to it too, so make sure you check it out. And always remember, Get out and bang.